So hello there and welcome back to the channel. This is Mel's Gaming here with another Way of the Hunter video. Now in this video we're going to be going around and taking out some lower quality animals from various different herds and whilst I do that I'm going to explain how I choose which animals I actually take out in this game in order to try and improve the overall quality of whatever animals I'm actually shooting. So as you will see here we have a couple of groups of deer in front of us, we have a group of mule deer and we have a group of whitetail. Now because these are so close together I'm going to assess both herds and decide which herd I actually want to take an animal out of. So taking a look at the group of mule deer first and we have a two star mature, a three star mature and a two star adult. So kind of a nice mix in there. The two star mature is probably the one I would select to take out of this herd. I would definitely 100% leave that two star adult as that has some nice potential to grow into something a lot bigger. The three star mature may get to four stars. I don't think it will end up at five but there's a possibility so I'd still rather leave that. But the two star mature I'm pretty sure isn't gonna get much bigger than that so that's probably the one I'd take out of that herd. But that said, even that two star mature didn't look very grey. None of them looked very grey. So they probably have still got some, some decent ageing to do yet before they get really to the end of their life cycle. But taking a look at the group of whitetail, and we have a two star mature buck who is very, very grey. You can see compared to the rest of the deer in this herd, he's this very silvery colour deer. Now, like I said, with the mule deer, they were still all brown colours. They weren't really grey grey like they were about to go off and die. So leaving them to see what they actually might end up as, I don't see that as, you know, a bad idea. So by assessing both herds, I decided that this was the animal we were going to take. And something else that helped me make that decision was looking at the mule deer, they all looked to have pretty even antlers. Whereas whilst looking at this white tail, as well as him being really old, which as like I said, you can see that by the colour of his coat, he also is uneven with his antlers. So this was the animal that I selected to take out while assessing both groups. So this is the, the whitetail that we have shot. He is a 57.08% genetic. Now exactly what the genetics mean in this game is still a little bit up for debate, but it does seem to be the case that the lower quality animals have the lower percentage on the genetics. Your higher quality animals like four and five stars will have the higher percentage genetics, which makes sense. But sometimes you'll get cases where you have an animal that really doesn't appear like it's going to be anything big or special, like a two star mature, and it's very grey looking and old and wonky or whatever, and it will have a higher percentage genetic than you expect. So sometimes it doesn't always completely make sense, but in the most part, if you're shooting an animal and you see it has a low genetic percentage, that's exactly the kind of animal that you're looking to cull out of your herds in order to improve the quality. Now moving on to the next herd and we have another herd of mule deer. Now there were some nice individuals in this herd including a four star mature and a three star mature but there was also this individual, a one star adult with very very poor looking antlers. Now unfortunately he would only give me that very difficult shot angle of him heavily quartering away but using a bit of an overpowered rifle managed to get that shot up through his lungs and as you can see he's stumbling there through the trees and he's not going to go very far before he actually goes down from that. Now this was a perfect animal to select from this herd, like I said there was a lot of good bucks in this herd and this one was clearly lacking and as you can see once again very uneven and this to me just is a perfect definition of a cull animal in this game. You see something with antlers like that, you really don't want that in your herd. In, in general you see something that's really uneven and it's normally quite low on the genetic percentage and those like I said are the animals that you really want to take out to increase the quality of your herds. Now I was actually super pleased with how that shot paid off even though like I said I was using an overpowered rifle using the 300 win mag but as you can see it went straight up where I needed it to going through the lungs. But taking a look at the animal info for this mule deer and you can see 36.51% on the genetics. This is a really poor quality buck and just taking a look at his antlers like I said you can see he's completely uneven. This is not the kind of animal that you want to leave. You see something like this, this is the kind of animal that 
I immediately, this is the one I'm taking out. There was no other bucks in that herd that I really wanted to take out. The four star mature, obviously I want to leave, and I'll talk a bit more about that later, but my opinion is always leave four stars, don't ever shoot them. So definitely leaving that. The three star might have had some more potential in him as well, but that individual, just no chance. And the young ones, I they all looked pretty good, so I was pretty happy to leave them, but that adult was really dragging down the quality of that herd, so best to remove him. Now, moving on to take a look at a different species completely, and we have some bighorn sheep here. Now, you can see I'm scanning through the herd, and we have quite a mix of star ratings. There's a two-star mature, there's a four-star mature, there's a couple of one-star youngs, and there's a couple of one-star adults. Now, out of this group, immediately, the ones that I'm thinking about taking are that two-star mature and the one-star adults. Like I mentioned previously with the mule deer, Four star matures, in my opinion, should always be left. In my opinion, there is absolutely no reason to take a four star mature, unless you're not really fussed about getting five star trophies. If you are actually actively looking to try and get five stars though, don't shoot four stars. There's just no point in doing it. If the animal dies, okay, it dies and you missed out on a four star. If the animal lives and makes it to five star, then you've got your trophy. If you shoot it as a four star and it would have been a five star, then you've missed out. And I just don't see the point at all in shooting four stars. I never do it. Anything that hits four star, I leave. And like I said, if it ends up dying, it ends up dying. But here we have the big horn that I chose to shoot. It was one of the one star adults that in my view looked really poor. It just looked like a very, very small adult. So this was the one that I opted to actually take out of this group first. I will come back to this group and take out the other one star adult and that two star mature, unless the two star mature dies. But taking a closer look at this big horn, and I can see straight away why he is a one star. He is wonky. As you can see, the one horn flares out to the side way more than the other one. And I'm wondering if the other individuals, the two star mature and the other one star adult, have the same thing as with genetics in this game you will see that kind of thing happening if one animal is wonky in a herd you will see the other animals in the herd being wonky often as well so that will be something to take a look at in the future now here we're going to take a look at one of my best genetic groups on the map this is a group of whitetail and this is in diamond drill which is quite a famous spot for having good genetics now there is one individual in this herd that i'd like to take out and it is a two star mature unfortunately he didn't give me a shot opportunity at this particular time but it was still a nice way to actually show off this group and talk about the next subject, which is private land. Now, something that you're going to notice is that the private land areas on this game do hold better genetics than those on the public land. The areas where you have to either pay to get access or do missions for the landowners in order to be able to hunt on those particular areas, they will hold better genetic quality than out in basically your starting areas. And that is basically to simulate real life and to give the impression of okay this is on someone's land so they've already been managing these animals therefore these animals are already at a better quality and it's basically just to simulate that aspect of real life which i think is kind of interesting so again if you're looking to try and get some higher genetic animals do put in the effort to go and unlock those areas on the map that are initially locked that are private and you should end up finding some higher quality animals now that is not to say that you can't get higher quality animals and five stars in the starting free areas on the map you absolutely can in fact my first five star whitetail was not far from the starting lodge on nez Perce valley in the public land so you know make use of those public land areas i know i said starting area but the starting areas or the public land areas on the map cover a huge, huge portion of the map. The private land areas cover a good bit too, but make use of those public areas while you don't actually have access to those private locations. And as long as you keep managing, you should end up with some good quality animals. Now taking a look at this group of whitetail and we have a little bit of an interesting situation here. As you will have seen as I was spotting them, there was no adults or matures in this particular herd. Now I have actually been managing this herd and I had recently taken out a two star adult that was incredibly wonky. In fact, I am amazed that it was a two star. I don't know why it was a two star. From everything I know in this game, it should have been a one star. So a little bit confused about that, but I took him out and he was a low quality animal. So 
through was really pleased to get him out of this area because this is still in diamond drill so i try to manage these herds as best as i can to actually keep up the genetics that are already here and yeah he was a bit of an unfortunate one but coming back and taking a look at this herd again and there was only young males left now normally i advise leaving one star youngs you don't normally want to shoot them especially with animals that don't have characteristics like horns or antlers that you can actually take a look at and give sort of give you an idea of the quality of that animal if it's a predator species like i said anything that doesn't have horns or antlers do not shoot one star youngs if you can avoid it just because you never know that one one star young could turn into something a lot bigger along the way but the reason i chose to shoot this particular one star young is as you will see he is wonky and like i mentioned earlier wonky antlers and wonky horns if you have a couple of individuals in that group that have the the wonky trait they will pass it on and it will come out in their offspring and that's exactly what's happened here as far as i can tell is i took out the you know the older buck that was in the herd and obviously his genetics must be influencing the rest of the herd and then we end up with wonky youngsters as well and we'll actually take a look it's a bit of a better example of that a little bit later on where you'll see multiple animals actually having the same sort of wonkiness throughout an entire herd so we'll talk about that a little bit later but taking another look at another herd of mule deer and i just took out a one star adult buck now he didn't go very very far at all actually before he went down and taking a look at him he is just a really really low quality buck very spindly tiny looking antlers for a one star adult and like i said being a one star this is a perfect animal to target he's just a small very uneven buck and in fact in a moment when we take a look in the inspect screen you will be able to see just how wonky this individual was again the 270 pump doing a fantastic job and just going straight through those organs there but we have a 19.86 percent genetic buck now that is really poor you know we had that whitetail previously and he wouldn't have been anything special being in the 70s for his percentages but a 19 percent that is a really low quality buck and you can see what i mean very poor antlers very very wonky this is a by definition a perfect cull animal you see something like this in one of your herds immediately try and get rid of it this is not what you want to leave to breed on your map that is not a good example of a mule deer in this game at all and yeah like i said really happy to actually get that one out that's a perfect example of a cull animal now as i mentioned we're going to take a look at a group of animals where you can see the fact that you can have one animal in a herd that's wonky and then you'll actually see other animals in that herd be wonky too so the mountain goat there in the middle that i just had my crosshairs on was actually a two star adult and the ones either side are actually one stars and they are wonky and even the one that is further off to the left there that's just being covered by the edge of the scope are, is also a one star adult and is also wonky and we're going to actually take that one as he just lifted his head but it's really interesting to be able to see the wonkiness carrying on throughout the rest of the herd so they, they must have been sired i'm guessing in terms of genetics by a wonky individual now the two star we're obviously going to leave and hope that he gets bigger because he is even and i'm hoping that he could turn into something really nice and hopefully he will then you know his his genetics will influence the rest of the herd and hopefully we'll get some better animals in this herd and i say his genetics should influence because that is how it works in this game the animals that you leave their genetics have an influence on what respawns so that's why i say you know sired or fathered it, it's like you're leaving breeding animals if you think about it like that you're leaving breeding stock when you take out other animals so you have to think about what you want to leave as your breeding stock and you want to leave some of those better quality animals in hopes that they will throw even better quality in their youngsters but taking a look here in the inspect screen in close up and you will see exactly what i mean that mountain goat was so uneven and as you will have seen the other individuals that were one stars in that herd as well were exactly the same so we'll have to keep coming back and trying to get rid of those other one stars so that the two star is the one that should hopefully then be having the most influence over what actually respawns as youngsters 
Now, moving over to Transylvania now for a little while, and we actually have a group here of wild boar. Now, this is just a terrible group of wild boar. They are all one stars. One star youngs, one star adults, one star mature. Now, the one I'm going to end up taking in this group is the one star mature, because the one star youngs could end up growing into something a bit better. Even the one star adult might end up as maybe a two star mature, but the one star mature, he's already at that mature stage and hasn't gotten any bigger. So we're going to take him out of this group. And as you'll see, 48.92% on the genetics. Again, a perfect animal to take out. When I do have a herd like that, where it's all one stars from the youngsters all the way to the matures, I do try and take the one star matures first. Because just like I said, if there's one star adults, then maybe they might get a little bit better. If not, you can cull them out. The one star youngs could turn into anything as long as they're... Well, when they have horns or antlers, as long as they're even. But in this case, with wild boar, you can't really tell anything like that. So you just have to kind of leave them and see what they turn into. Same with, like, foxes and wolves. One star youngs, just leave them, see what they end up growing into. So that ended up being a pretty good animal to actually take out. And we'll have to see what the other individuals in that particular group actually turn into. Now, with this next animal, I'm going to take an animal that perhaps I shouldn't have. And explain something else that you kind of need to take into consideration in this game when you're looking for cull animals. Now you can see here we have a group of fallow deer. There are a couple of two star matures and also a few one star adults. Now I decided that I was going to take one of the one star adults because that's normally what I would do. One star adults are normally for most species something that I'm going to look to cull out straight away. One star adults normally have really poor genetics so I see this one star adult that's just down here by the road and he's offering a pretty good shot there once he lifts his head up so i decided to take him and actually managed to drop him on the spot the rest of the herd goes running off and i'm pretty satisfied with the buck i've taken now when we pick him up i'm going to be quite interested to see what his genetic percentage was now again really happy with that shot again the 270 performing really really well there and just going straight through but taking a look at this guy he's 88.93 percent on the genetics so should I have shot this buck? Because that's actually quite high. And, you know, that's pushing five star range. That's, you know, he might have even just made it as a five star. Now, it's interesting. Because as I mentioned earlier, sometimes you'll get really wonky individuals or individuals that you just know are poor that end up having high genetic percentage. And whether that's just because they're their sire had good genetics and it's kind of goes into the youngsters as well i'm unsure but the thing is that you have to take into account is that animals do age in this game so even though he's an adult he may only be a young adult he may have only just become an adult so he may still have a lot of growing to do in his adult years and then into his mature years and that's honestly what i suspect happened here so this is probably a buck i shouldn't have taken out so that's definitely something to consider when you're actually going through and culling different animals is take a look in the encyclopedia and take a look at the information for the animal you're hunting and see how long they can live see how long the different periods of time between it being a youngster an adult and being mature see how long those time periods are how many years because some animals in this game live for a very very long time and you could shoot it as a younger adult when it might have still had a lot of potential of growing to do so that's definitely something to keep in mind and that's something i wanted to include in this video that yeah i probably shouldn't have shot that one but, you know, it's something to definitely take note of. Now, once again, normally I won't take one star youngs, but this red deer, he was definitely a good candidate to actually cull out. And I think by this point in the video, you can probably already tell why. Look at those uneven antlers. That is a very poor youngster. I have seen many, many much better youngsters for the red deer. This is a very poor quality individual with those really wonky antlers. And as soon as I saw that, yeah, he was the one I was going to take from the group. I don't want even to spend the time on this one aging. This is just, I knew, a poor individual. And I'm really glad that I ended up taking this one out. But like I said, in the, sort of the majority of stuff, you probably don't want to be shooting one star youngs. If you can tell that it's lower quality because it's wonky or anything like that, then go ahead. But with most animals, especially anything that doesn't have antlers or horns, so your waterfowl species, your predator species, generally I'd recommend against shooting those because you never know what they might actually grow into. You've got no indication from anything from them because they don't 
don't have those great big signals on their head as to what kind of quality that they actually are. Now, we're just going to take a look at this little random clip that ended up happening not too long ago, where a random five-star American Badger actually just ran out in front of me. And we'll just have this clip playing in the background whilst I actually finish this uh, last bit of the video, because this was actually a really cool kill and I really wanted to include it. You don't see a whole lot of the five-star Badgers, or many of the five-star Predators, actually. They seem to be quite hard to get. So I was super excited to see this. This is only my second five-star American Badger, and it was by complete surprise so that was really awesome but all of the principles in this video do also apply to your waterfowl species and your predator species you want to be taking out the lower quality individuals to try and boost the quality of your flocks or your packs whatever you're talking about in terms of species so it's, it's sometimes more difficult like i said because they don't have the antlers or the horns do definitely pay attention to how long the animals can actually live for and if you've got something like a one star adult red fox that's probably a really good one to take out i know i had i think a three or four star adult red fox so that's kind of what you're going to be looking for and then hope that when it turns mature that it actually hits five star because they have a very short age range they're not don't have a really long age range whereas something like the bears they actually live for a really long time both of the bear species in game live for a very long time so you know a one star adult could still have a lot of growing to do and may actually turn into something better so like i said definitely especially with animals that don't have antlers or horns to give you any indication really just pay attention to the encyclopedia and the information it gives you about how long those animals can live for all you need to do is go to the encyclopedia go to the animals section then you'll be able to scroll down through the list of all of the animals that you've actually discovered and then you can take a look at the information it gives you it will give you the age range for them as youngsters age range for them as adults and age range for them as matures so you can make a better assessment of an animal based off of the information that it gives you it will also give you tips as to what to look for in an older animal versus a youngster so for example with the white tail it will tell you that it's going to have a grayer coat and it's going to look you know like an older animal than it you know than the youngsters do and that's really helpful information so i do really recommend checking up in the encyclopedia for that kind of information as well i do it so it's definitely useful but that is going to be it for this video i really hope that this has been at least somewhat helpful there's a bit of a fine art to this game when it comes to managing herds and flocks and packs and everything of your animals so it's definitely something that takes a while to learn and something that as with time you'll get more and more used to okay that's a cull animal versus that's something i want to leave like i said my biggest takeaway i think that i'd like people to take from this video please don't shoot four stars if you're looking for five stars it pains me when i see people try and shoot four stars and then it ends up being and a really high percentage genetic that probably would have ended up as a five star so please if you're trying to get five stars don't shoot your four stars leave them alone see if they turn into a five star and if if they don't then those genetics are still in that herd and hopefully you'll end up getting one that ends up growing even bigger in the future so that's like my final point in this video is don't shoot your four stars but that is going to be it so thank you so so much for watching if you have any further questions or additions things that you think i've missed out in this video please feel free to leave them down in the comments at the end of the day this video is to try and help so the more information that we can gather the more things that we can talk about and help each other out in the comment section and that's always brilliant so if you think that i've missed something please feel free to correct me or give some more information i'd be really happy to hear it and like i said if you have any questions then i will do my absolute best to answer them but once again that is going to be it so a huge thank you for all your support as always it really does mean the world and i hugely appreciate it and i will see you in the next video thank you